want to who think of or dream of competing with china guys instead of going to thailand and getting all those massages just go uh, uh, take a chinese visa and bus shanghai ja ke but i think it's all about the execution uh, you don't see that if i have all the elements which are basically required for a good quality of life i don't see a good story you know i have to knit everything together to you know to have a good story everything is treated in isolation and that possibly is the reason you know i mean so i think whenever we talk of quality of life we also need to talk about the quality of governance as an as, as a key metric and currently when when you talk about police when you talk about the judicial system when you talk of general governance anything that has to do with uh, a government institution in india that whole experience for the average citizen is really abysmal i think today an average indian feels that his life today is much better than his parents life back in 90s or 80s and i think that's one's testament for the fact that india is probably grown better than maybe 25 30 years and i know anand you are disagreeing with you i disagree with you here that while you are right saying rural india is still different and rural india is probably shit rural india is still a better shit than what it was 30 years ago and i think that is what i'm trying to tell the story that but just to give an example of a village that i come from never had 24 hour electricity never had 24 hours drinking water you have that change you have that change in a in a in a in a village like shekpura or munger that i'm talking about india was born in 1991 for me from a liberalization point of view india is a 30 year old country in 30 years you tell me which other country was able to do all the things which this country which this country was able to do it with the amount of population it has with the Talk amount of infrastructure it has with the Can amount of more? corruption it has okay quality of doctors it gets highlighted in rural india and i've seen it yeah. I've seen it. I have faced it. Yeah, because it sir, why would? And I think that's because the problem. Sorting. Why would the uh, high qualified doctors stay in Saranpur? Exactly. Says, We call it sorting. मेरे को पैसे बनाने हैं मैं मुंबई जाऊँगा. This I so, think is the most important slide and the most important reason why the quality of life in India, despite all the growth we have talked about, doesn't reflect to into the reality of it and why millions of Indians. aspirational indians who want to have a better life leave the country I'm it's optimist. not just it's not just the government that has to change its stack people it is all the people that people. have to change absolutely it's as well. long as you pay attention only to that bloody paycheck that you get every month and how bigger or how weighty it's becoming tum kuch nahi sudharoge that's true and and because we are being critics doesn't mean that we, we don't love our country we love our country that's why we we speak so passionately correct But, Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning to all. Uh, we are back again after a gap of few weeks. So we all had our work commitments, but the Kautilya podcast is back here, uh, and we wanted to bring up a new topic. Um, so before we start our topic, I thought we introduce ourselves for anyone who has not seen after our last video. I thank everyone who has seen the video. Uh, appreciate all the likes and comments. we got in our last video on the us immigration so really thank you for that uh, we are really three people uh, in three different parts of the world uh, sitting in india us and norway uh, airing and voicing our opinions and thoughts giving that main giving the non mainstream perspective and try to look at facts and figures and data and use that to lend a perspective uh, to to current affair topic so uh, with that having said we thought we'll bring a new topic for today uh looking at our last topic of the us immigration i felt there was this conversations in the comments or generally the narrative was oh my country is the best india is the best oh no there are better countries in india so i thought hume laga ki you know ek we could do a quality of life comparison uh between our countries where we live so india us and norway uh and just give users or and our audience perspective ki how is life here or or what what is good quality of life here how do they how do they compare here uh 
Uh, a couple of disclaimers. We are not here to say one country is better than another country. Uh, every country has its pros and cons. That's my own personal belief that no country is perfect. Um, so you have to take the good things of each country or you have to take, you have to take uh, all the nice things of each, each region. Uh, and uh, with that, I wanted to you know, start out by comparing first uh, India quality of life. Because we India in India, we talk about this first. Uh, you know, India is not that great. India is only good for certain certain amount of population, and so we will get with that. Um, the other other disclaimer I have is uh, our focus is really while we are catering to our middle class audience and to the audience who want to leave India and immigrate to other parts of the world. Um, that's probably where our target segment is, because no politician or celebrity is going to leave India. They're doing really really well, and no. A uh, person who's at the pillar of the poverty line is going to leave India or say, I want to look at other countries and compare ki kaisa hai hai life because they get their own you know, benefits and schemes from the, the current government, the yojanas and everything. So really the focus is for the Indians who are trying to leave India and say, ki jana hai? Oh, what, how does it work? How does it look like? And it's just that giving that perspective. Um, take it what you hear and hope you will get to learn something uh, very interesting from all of us today. So, uh, शुरू करते हैं our topic. Uh, first, we'll start with India. जहाँ पे सब लोग हैं, जहाँ पे हम सब आए हैं वहाँ से, we all have come from there. Uh, let's look at India. How is looking? How is quality of life looking in India in in the current era? And uh, I want Saurav to go ahead. Come okay, I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure this might be a generic slide in among us while we are you know trying to project what the quality of life is let's say in america or or, or let's say in the scandinavian countries i'm not really sure if you guys have made this but i mean how do you define quality of life and i mean quality of life to me to you and let's say anand might vary you know within ourselves and when you're talking of you know let's say a population of around six seven billion people in this planet earth every individual or let's say, if you, even if you want to, let's, you know, concentrate to certain areas or demographics or geography, it might vary in terms of what quality of life for them would be. So let's say if you're asking a person in India, his, you know, and I have a slide for that, uh, a common man in India who is, let's say, staying, who is in a BPL below poverty line, for him, let's say the quality of life, we are, mere table pe khana de do, mere ko chhat de do, mere ko paani de do. And that's what I possibly would define quality of life. You know, that for me is okay, agar mujhe isa mil gaya, that's, that's enough for me. But as you grow up the ladder, you know, you ask a middle class or an upper middle class, for them, the quality of life, you know, might, you know, might be completely different to what, you know, a, a person who, uh, basically we just asked, if you ask a below poverty line or a poor guy. So, this particular side, I mean, if you just look at it, these, these are the various, uh, you know, adjectives or uh, characteristics, whatever, you know, you know, attach uh, a word uh, to, you know, how would you try to define quality of life? There, there are things like, if I, even if I'm earning 50,000 and if I'm living happily with my family, that's, that's enough for me. That's, that's, that's a high quality of life. A person who is living in India, a person who is living, let's say, in Middle East, the quality of life is completely different. I mean, we are an aspirational country or a fast-growing economy. There are certain countries, let's say a country like Mongolia. I don't think so. They have any, you know, aspirations of becoming a 5 trillion economy or a 10 trillion economy. So since, you know, those aspirations aren't there, they are possibly happy with what they basically have. And I can be wrong, you know, Anant, is, Anant has traveled a lot and you have traveled a lot. So those aspirations possibly also de de define what quality of life you know, would basically mean to people of, you know, that particular geography. So this is what I could come up with. These are the various elements which are involved in quality of life. Uh, again, it would, you know, vary from uh, person to person, country to country, religion to religion, caste to caste, you know. Okay. Now, uh, if you just look at a textbook definition of what quality of life is, I mean, a, there is a very standard definition given by economy, uh, you know, economists. And every time there, there is a certain index that kind of, kind of comes out every year, everyone is kind of, you know, looking at gauging at, you know, what is 
you know uh, how is your health faring how is your ease of life how is your you know public transportation commute there are various various indicators they have various weightage attached to it and they come up with some sort of a, some sort of a, you know ranking system and define you know where a particular country or within a country you know various cities what are you know what is basically you know what is the quality of life for that particular country or a city everyone is aware of that now since i am talking about india and i just spoke about it a common man in india okay i mean i'm showing a uh, showing an image of a farmer i think india is changing but uh, predominantly india is still an agricultural you know based economy and 65% i mean i was a little shocked i was just doing some sort of a research 65% of the indian population still live in rural areas so if they are still living in rural areas predominantly you know you can think of indian economy at least in those 65% you know uh, of those people would be you know the it would be agriculture based and i just said i think for a very common one and aam aam aadmi of india the most common things that they basically would require is a permanent roof food on table good education medical facility water and electricity which after 70 75 years of independence also is an impending sort of an issue although i think nothing you know i'm, I'm not trying to praise this government but there is some amount of work you know which has been done on water and electricity in the last 10 to 15 years and yes internet uh which is quite an addition to have and which kind of talks about you know the, the digital progress you know that possibly you know uh, india has made uh, I, now i come to know when i speak to let's say uh, you know certain maids or drivers one thing that they basically need on a day on day basis is the internet is the phone the internet your phone right yeah, phone, phone along phone. with the internet phone yeah with the internet now the another you know i i mean i don't have a slide for it another important you know uh, figure that i was kind of looking at india basically have 93% of smartphones so if you have a smartphone you're basically looking at every smartphone you know with with a 4g or a 5g predominantly it's going to be 4g 5g something which is newly which is kind of newly crept in in the indian market and not many of them have 5g but internet is something that every you know village every tier 2 tier 3 tier 1 city everyone wants to have it every per, every kid that i know who is let's say 10 to 15 year old and if he's holding a phone one thing that he basically needs or he basically looks at you know what is the uh, what do you call that uh, what is my pack i mean hota hai na 1 gb 2 gb 3 gb that's a minimum requirement that everyone has so this is another factor A, a a different sort of a factor possibly what if you were asked five five years ago you know would you really require this is this possibly wouldn't have come in but now this is something which is a part of you know indian ecosystem as far as you know day to day life is concerned so again this is very different to you know what you read in a textbook what you read in the newspaper what you read in the news or what you basically let's suppose you ask you know i think arvind and anand are going to talk about quality of life i'm pretty sure you know these either might be you know uh, combined and put together in one uh, you know uh, as one factor but if you look at india and ask a common man for me my opinion is these are the important factors which possibly would define a quality of life but having said that i think the benchmark which has been set you know which has been um, uh, put by the western countries is not a bad one i think uh, when i travel to uh, to any southeast asian economy i mean southeast asian country or or any western country i think one thing that i basically realize realizes or one thing that i basically think when, when is that time when i can have or when indians can have that quality of life and i think majority of the indian politicians in their day to day you know parliamentary speech their policy making is around although you know i think that it kind of moves at a snail pace but majority of their policy making would be around how do we improve the quality of life of a common citizen he can be living in a, sorry he can be living in rural india or he can be living in the urban india but majority of their policy you know a policy making schemes would be around how do we basically ensure quality of life whether it's about giving free education be it about free health care they have the right plans and i think they possibly had the right plan since you know our economy kind of opened up in 1991 but i think it's all about the execution 
you don't see that if I have all the elements which are basically required for a good quality of life, I don't see a good story. You know, I have to knit everything together to, you know, to have a good story. Everything is treated in isolation and that possibly is the reason, you know, I mean, I'm going to talk about it. There are certain aspects which have, which I thought, you know, which are very important or close to me or close to, you know, certain middle class and upper middle class, which kind of, which I have, you know, uh, showed in, in my subsequent slides, which are important. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but having said so, I think one of the problems that this country faces, and we can have a healthy discussion around it, is the implementation side of things. The, the, you know, everything doesn't come together and flow as a process. I have everything working in isolation. I have a separate education policy. I have a separate, uh, you know, employment policy. Employment policy works differently to your education policy, you know, and ideally they should be talking to each other but they don't really talk to each other. And so everything is kind of left in isolation. And that's one, one of the problems which I basically feel, you know, which uh, which kind of impacts the overall quality of life. So when I move to, you know, what are those various aspects? You know, I, I spoke about, about the Aam Janta, but if you look at, uh, you know, the, again, the textbook, and if I am I, as a, you know, a middle class who is aspiring to move to an upper middle class, and when I visit other countries, what are those aspects which I basically would want, uh, you know, in my daily life to make sure I have almost as a good, good uh, quality of life, let's say, as, which, you know, let's say Anant and Arvind, you guys are experiencing in, in, in USA. And there are, there are various elements, health, security, you know, development, community development, natural resources, infrastructure, a lot of aspects. Now, if, again, uh, when I move to the quality of life, and again, this is some, a very important index, I would believe something that, you know, at least our Indian media tries to project it out as far as, you know, uh, where, uh, you know, uh, our cities or our country basically is heading as far as overall development is concerned, which also would give, you know, some sort of an indicator on overall quality of life. Is it improving? Yes or no? is human development index and, and anant me you can you can just correct me if i am if my understanding is wrong but i thought basically you know just to look at this particular index and where india is fair how india is faring compared to rest of the countries although you know when i dug into you know how this particular index is calculated there are three common three factors which basically aren't you know which uh, uh, which basically goes into the calculation of this particular index which is life expectancy gni education education has two factors how much time uh, what is the dropout rate and uh, and there's another one i'm not able to remember what exactly it is but it's kind of linked to the education now if you look at india india again i've looked at how india has progressed in the last 10 years there has been very marginal increase as far as HDI index goes. And this is something that I just want to you know, correlate to you know, the GDP of India. Because I basically thought if India mm -hmm. has improved from 1 trillion to 3 trillion or less, you know, almost close to 4 trillion economy, the human development index of India should have improved, if not dramatically, marginally. Because that's what how it is, right? I mean, your your uh, GDP grows, your uh, quality of life. I mean, at least for me, I mean, I can I can see a huge you know stark difference the way I was living in 2010, and the way I'm living right now in 2022. I'm not saying the things around me have changed, but at least personally speaking, I see there is there's sudden amount of change. But again, it it's a it's a personal story, so it may not you know it may not happen with each and every one. But if I just looked at the HDI index, it's pretty miserable, which kind of talks about one aspect. Maybe the economy is growing, but the rest of the things which, which touches the human life, those aspects possibly, you know, we are not paying. India as a country is not paying, you know, uh, importance. So things like hospitals, things like ease of transportation, uh, ease of commute, uh, let's say in a city. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just talking about city. I, I stay in Hyderabad. Right now, I'm in Jaipur. I've been to Kolkata. I've been to Delhi. I've been to Mumbai. Stayed there for a lot, you know, stayed there, you know, in those cities for a longer duration of time. One thing that I basically find among all the cities is, you know, the commute, the pollution, irrespective of how much you're earning, right? Um, possibly you're earning one crore or two crores every, every year. But you basically come across the very same, let me use the word, shit. 
day on a day on day basis. It's basically the same. What you experienced in 2011 and what you're going to experience in 2023, even though the economic story says we have moved from 1 trillion to 4 trillion, almost 4 trillion, says something else. But the human side of it, the things that basically impacts you on a day on day life. And this possibly is, you know, those index, which this, this, this is the index that possibly is quite near to you know, touching that particular element. It tells the complete story. It yeah. gives the story. And it, it, I mean, even though I have a problem with the way this is calculated, but I would still say that possibly it is a fair ranking. It may not be 132, possibly even if I disagree with the way how it's calculated, I possibly feel the best that India possibly would have reached, even though let's suppose to our convenience, we would have included certain factors, you know, India still would be faring somewhere around 1890, if not, uh, I don't think, I, I, not not anything beyond 1890. So yeah. 132 is a very abysmal sort of ranking for India as far as HDI goes. And I just kind of substantiated why it kind of deserves to be there, even though I have some problems the way the HDI index is calculated. So if you just look at, you know, India, China, India, China, we always do the comparison. India, is, China is 80. Although I kind of felt uh, I haven't been to China, but uh, with all the stories that I get to hear from my brother who's been to China, who's stayed in China for a longer duration of time, duration of time possibly China deserves to be in, uh, in, in the higher HDI. I mean, to be, you know, better HDI ranking, I'm not really sure. And you guys can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. But specifically to India, India has made very so slow strides as far as the HDI index is, is concerned. And looking at, you know, the things that, you know, as I just said, happens around us, I think it's kind of fair. It's kind of fair. Education, gross national yeah. income, life expectancy. Life expectancy, again, I, I have a slide to it. <laughs> Made decent strides, but possibly not to a not to a you know a standard that other other countries possibly might have. So, any yeah. things that you want to talk about on this particular aspect? Uh, I don't know if you have included this particular slide in in your pack, oh, but uh, I thought this was, a, uh, this was an see, interesting one. Go ahead, Anand. Yeah, it's quite interesting, but again, um, quality of life uh, and human development. It's one of the most widely discussed topics, uh, not just among economists, but generally speaking uh but one thing which i always constantly miss in all these discussions is if you go back to your previous slide is the notion or the quality of governance now how can you expect a really good quality of life just go one slide before uh you know if when i look at this slide it always reminds me of this crass uh sloganeering that used to happen under the congress regime roti kapra or makan Right. Uh, it sort of reminds me that or, or, or seems to suggest that these are the only three things that we care about. Remember, human civilization evolved mm -hmm. uh, and could only become more successful, whether it, you talk in terms of GDP growth or uh, in terms of artistic evolution uh, or in terms of innovation. All of this has happened across societies, across countries. Only when the question of roti kapta or makan has been fixed to a to an agreeable level. Now, if you what is the difference between uh, the West, for example, and India? Uh, India continues to be a poor country on the average. All right, let's let's make no two two facts about it. Mm -hmm. And unless we solve that roti kapta or makan, unless we escape that trap of roti kapta or makan, we won't be able to innovate as a society. Right. The other day, I was watching uh, 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 an interview with Abhijit Chavda with an IISC professor in physics, and he was talking about the abysmal quality of science and innovation in India. Now, why is that? It's because you don't even get one. One of the main reasons is you don't even get uh, really good candidates to come and pursue PhDs in those uh, elite institutions. Why? First. If you are, if you, if you have to spend, let's say you have twenty four hours in a day, and you have to spend a major chunk of that worrying about your food, worrying about whether you have a shelter, uh, and worrying whether uh, you know whether you have access to healthcare. Where does it get, lead, leave, leave you the time to pursue uh, good quality education? Again, I'm only talking of those who really want to study hard, right? So, uh, 
so i think whenever we talk of quality of life we also need to talk about the quality of governance as an as, as a key metric and currently when, when you talk about police when you talk about the judicial system when you talk of general governance anything that has to do with uh, a government institution in india that whole experience for the average citizen is really abysmal all right uh, now if you go, go back to the other slide the the graphs that you here see again the problem with all indices is they are quite noisy most of these are based on surveys now again the question here is if let's say uh, freedom house or one of these other think tanks has done a survey in different countries who exactly did the survey it's always not very clear now what you're seeing in terms of aggregate economic growth if you look at in terms of gdp is okay india has moved on to let's say a 2 or 3 trillion dollars economy but that is only reflecting part of the story and in a way it is only showing the growth in the urban side of things if you go to the rural areas you will still see that things are really shit all right so you might have uh, uh, the country boasting maybe 50 or 100 odd billionaires and then you we always tend to talk about the it sector as one of the crown jewels of the modern indian economy but guess what that even at the upper estimate cons consists of only let's say one crore or two crore people out of the entire country's population so i'm right. counting two crore people that are either directly or indirectly employed by the IT sector. So it's not just the IT professionals such as yourself, but your maybe a cook that you hire, maybe a Kamwali buy that you that you hire. Maybe she used to get 300, 400 rupees a month 20 years ago. Now she probably makes he or she probably makes six to nine, ten thousand rupees a month. So right. for these people who took the bold decision to move to cities and lead an urban life, their lives are marginally improved for sure. But st they still live in those shanty towns near those affluent neighborhoods. Just in, in Hyderabad, just go around Banjara and Jubilee Hills. You'll see countless such shanty towns around. Who's living in these areas? All the knockers who, who work in these uh, elite households, right? Now, just go outside of Hyderabad or one of the metropolitan uh, metros, um, maybe 50 kilometers away. You will start to see a very different India where farmers are still struggling to 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 you know to even get a minimum support uh, price for their goods no, i'm not sure how many of your viewers are watching uh, have watched news recently you know uh, at at one point the price of to uh, tomatoes went down to such a level that farmers lit it, i think it was 3 or 2 rupees a kilo they literally had to dump all their produce on the ground and just walk away that's about 6 months of effort so when when we are talking about human development index and we are complaining that our country is so poor guess what if you if you include more factors if you actually go and sample uh, the rural areas more thoroughly you might see that 132 ranking go down even further if you can now this begs why is the government not focusing on improving governance i don't see any any improvement to that to that aspect so Anand, I'll, I'll I'll jump in here and I will say yeah. I think you and the make... rising inequality just to finish rising yeah, inequality yeah so I I mean I'll I'll in I'll state this is we have to look here at India I don't want India I don't want India to compare India with other countries I want to compare India with India India in 1980s and 1990s is very different than India in 2023. And so, yes, you will say the index has not marginally moved. But the flip side of the argument here is life of an average Indian has tremendously improved for someone who lived in 1990s to now. Yes, urban India, for sure. Rural India, may shaya itna movement nahi hua And I think, uh, Saurav, you were talking about it, right? It, it is going at a snail space. But... Yeah it is going in the direction where it needs to go. So I am I am saying here is, I'm kind of supporting India that the fact is, I think India is on that path. Probably India is, could go fast. And that's probably a different argument. Can India go faster? Can India go slower? I think 
today an average indian feels that his life today is much better than his parents life back in 90s or 80s and i think that's one's testament for the fact that india is probably grown better than maybe 25 30 years and i know anand you're disagreeing with you i disagree with you here that while you are right saying rural india is still different and rural india is probably shit rural india is still a better shit than what it was 30 years ago and i think that is what i'm trying to tell the story that i think we have to give cut some slack to india as a country here that there are pockets of the country which has grown and then there are pockets of the country which has not yet grown yeah. and i think that's probably so, where i i I'll leave I, i'll leave this particular uh, aspect of it go ahead, go ahead, look sorry. one thing is to say that things were marginally better today than they are that than they were in the 80s and 90s that's one thing to say but for a country that is churning out 1 to 2 million graduates every year you know the country needs to grow at a much faster pace so I am, i'm is, not saying i'm not saying country is better not especially enough. for us no 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 it's it's the question is not about whether things are better for us uh than they were even 10 15 years ago the question is if you look at the aggregate change in the quality of life for the population especially the younger population if you don't move at a certain rate of growth which we sh- which we aren't and not just in terms of how much money we have today versus what we had to to uh, 10 years ago it's also in terms of how our engagement with government uh, government institutions how our engagement with healthcare how it all improves over time it has to change in a in a much more rapid fashion Correct. for but the here's years, a, here, incoming here, graduates here's to the take problem so, here is a problem so, india never had a stable government india from 1991 till 2014 had revolving governments who only cared about votes voting patterns i want to win the next election if i'm in the mechanism with so, the next election jeetna hai why would i waste time you know spending time again, you know picking uh, up on one no you're picking understand up the point here that okay you you got to give come some slack to india india in 2014 till 2023 has definitely improved as uh, sora would say his life has definitely improved for how what it was in 2010 to 2023 i am not saying india has not done extraordinarily well india has not excelled you know amazingly well here india has moved forward did it move forward at a better rate which it should that's probably okay. a debate that's that's where i leave it go ahead sir yeah so so although we have one thing in common that we are for all for, we all are from hyderabad and you both guys are especially from telangana and andhra pradesh i mean i can be wrong it is it's either telangana or andhra pradesh or both but i'll take this you know uh, opportunity that okay i am from bihar okay i have certain relatives who stay in united in uttar pradesh there are certain relatives of mine who stay in orissa and i and uh, my my wife's uh, parental family they stay in jharkhand which is dhanbad okay so i possibly have certain amount of information that i could gather in the last 5 to 6 years in terms of what basically have changed in their lives when i say they are not their families but people that whom i have spoken to like a place like bihar okay and i'm talking of a district like munger or shekhpura you can guys can google these these districts do exist by the by, by the way so certain changes that basic and this is a slide that i just wanted to touch upon i mean you know while doing you know some amount of research i have heard you know certain things that have been done by this particular government just to make sure all those elements of quality of life although i spoke about you know all the things don't flow together and there's not a good story that kind of come, kind of comes out at the end of the day but this government has kind of made an effort you know has went all, all the way to make sure you know all those elements which are basically required roti kapda makan as you know anand said they have made an effort to make sure they do whatever they could they can to ensure those impending issues that we've been facing since independence of let's not talk about roti kapda but it not don't, I, i won't talk about kapda and kapda agar main kapda bolunga you know if you can just remember the covid day and you know narendra modi came out came on that particular day and he announced the what do you call that lock or was that uh, lockdowns um, lockdowns yeah lockdowns can you just recollect any of the you know the scenes in the uh, news media outlet when they were basically showing you know people going back were you seeing people you know wearing worn worn tone uh, you know and these were labels that we are talking about right worn tone clothes i i didn't see it so the point that i basically want to make is you know 
it doesn't necessarily mean a poor guy would will basically wear a worn down cloth but it kind of there's a shift in the image that you basically you know uh, that we have of poor people or labor class people that we had in 1880s or 1990s uh, a, a a labor guy who is basically you know trying to move from one place to the other place on the event of lockdown he's basically walking from one place to the other place with a mobile phone in his hand right a smartphone now if a so again it does not define that you know they have attained economic freedom but i'm just trying to portray an image that uh, image where things have changed at least visually now this is one example it may not be an appropriate one but just to give you an example of a village that i come from never had 24 hour electricity never had 24 hours drinking water you have that change you have that change in a in a in a in a village like shekpura or munger that i'm talking about good roads so when i say good roads good national highway connectivity from one place to other place in a place like munger in a place like bihar again there are certain places in bihar where the national highway which i know nitin gadgari and his team kind of boast about it's not all hunky dory everywhere but the effort is there and the and see i'm using bihar and up as, as an example because if you look at all the basic index uh, indicators indexes in india these are the most laggard states and i'm also going to include jharkhand in there as well so there are and the the other scheme of you know making sure you have this swachh uh, swachh bharat abhiyan making sure you know what is that uh, toilet whatever toilet schemes they are there i did see it. how effective how long how long lasting they're going to be that's a question that you know uh, you know that we're going to be asking somewhere you know down the line in the future but there is some amount of change there is a little bit of change that has happened in the last 7 to 8 years if not you know 10 years at least during the second stint of this particular government as far as electricity is concerned as far as housing is concerned you got to see you know uh, just step out of samshabad airport in hyderabad you'll see the housing scheme that that you know that uh, uh, that this particular housing scheme that this particular government has come has you know come up with so there are certain improvements another important and since you know uh, anant you are an economist a recent report again how genuine authentic whatever word that you want to use and that's that's up for debate but a recent report said you know uh, 400 to 500 million people basically move from bpl to middle class right now it doesn't consider the inflation into picture it doesn't consider maybe various other uh, you know other economic uh, economic indicators which might you know end up deciding does it really matter if a person has moved from bpl to middle class but an important figure nonetheless that you know around 400 to 500 million people did move from you know the bpl to middle class now pretty sure quality of life for them might have a, and again the quality of life i just gave that general definition that you know it might vary from person to person maybe for them has improved certain schemes like again i speak to my maid during the co you know during the covid you have certain schemes like uh, direct bank, bank transfer which never existed remember rajiv gandhi making a statement yeah if i give 100 rupees the general pub public at the end end up receiving only 1 rupee so when you have this direct bank transfer and it did really did happen however small big the magnitude of amount can be can be you know can be up for debates but small little changes are there i think the only question that we got to be debating is is it really fast and i think that's one thing that i think you know i think we are really underselling india here uh, sort of i i don't i don't know why you guys say small little changes my last trip to india was an eye opener in terms of how india has changed now i'm digital not comparing economy. india with the west you look at india's digital you, ec ecosystem that's probably first world ec and, uh, nations do not even have it including usa by the way where i live they, they even they don't have this kind of infrastructure so really short selling that you know india's quality of life you know hasn't you know dramatically improved is also probably i think a little bit an unfair statement here kyunki mujhe lagta hai ki for an average person he feels his life is no better now i can you can debate it ki you know kitna better hai is it better as like norway or scandinavia probably not but i'm i'm looking at what his you know his life was before and anand i know you may disagree but i i'm sorry to say this i think india has done tremendous job in the last 10 years in trying to uplift the country economy 
let you need you need, you need to give stable government a chance it's not just infrastructure it's not right. just digital economy it is not just uh, the uh, uplifting of poverty here i get all these three has been done you have to understand it's a 1.4 billion people effectively pulling out from a lower income to a middle income to higher income is going to take us decades yeah. this is where i have i have serious issues because you don't give attention to the numbers like i do in some cases yeah Look, but the num you God. are when you say no no wait wait did you visit any indian village on your last trip to india i did not honestly you did not so you are speaking you did with from the perspective i did did you where so did you I go did, i went to the parts of telangana okay i did go in india so look again i am also speaking on the basis of my own experience now if you if you talk let me focus on the on the empirical part here you are saying that you, you, the uh, 400 or 500 odd million people moved from bpl to the middle middle class now my question i'm not asking you i'm saying it's you know if you put the threshold of bpl as let's say 2000 dollars per annum again simply crossing the threshold is not sufficient boss you have to say whoever is publishing these reports they have to say by how much you have moved in the last 10 years so simply say, saying i'm uh, 1999 uh, in gross annual income Anand, before, i don't care about wait, 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 i don't wait, care wait, about the point of 2001 dollars post sorry that's not uplifting poverty so i'm not asking you to provide the answer so if We... some government official is watching this please provide numbers about what is the distance of Guys, the trunk yeah let let me also bring the other essence of this topic the topic was not just bpl to this thing i'm also talking an average middle class today you look at in a city if he wants to move abroad he is looking at few things what he has he is like i have here good education system better than before i have opportunities here if i study in few segments here maybe not in other segments here i have all the things which i need for an entertainment in the city if i i mean you you go to a, a tier 2 city tier 2 city has everything that tier 1 has today i mean a, a guy living in bhopal doesn't need if he if he is happy in bhopal and he has no aspiration and i think that's what anand sorry we talked about it an aspirational right. india will be unhappy you get mujhe aur chahiye mujhe you know i need to travel bangkok i need to travel singapore i need to travel hong kong mere liye paisa nahi hai but an, a, a, a normal normal for a middle class person saying yeah mirko i'm getting good salary i'm able to buy a house i'm able to give a good education to my kids and if i think i can do all this living in india and with my family around in say in bhopal jaipur you know saharanpur lucknow great i can do that i think the problem we are all failing to understand here is india is just a 20 year old country i don't consider india between 1947 and 1991 that is an india which is which is the socialist india that is not the india we're talking india was born in 1991 for me from a liberalization point of view india is a 30 year old country in 30 years you tell me which other country was able to do all the things which this country which this country was able to do it with the amount of population it has with the Both amount of infrastructure it has with the Can amount of more? corruption it has okay south korea it has okay. well, now, see, what's the population yeah, of south yeah, yeah, korea yeah. it doesn't matter no, no, again this no, is a this is a this it is a very matters. no it doesn't no no i think see, one of the one, one of the most i think one of the most important factor is why possibly india moves at a snail pace or a slow pace let's call that as a slow pace let's not try to degrade by you know using the word snail is india is multiple countries in a country and it beautiful. is it is it is beautifully put every country something like rahul gandhi now no 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 oh. i think it's important no it's i think it's important it's important i think see i think for people like us possibly it doesn't matter but one thing that you know this particular country lacks and i don't think so this is uh, i mean we should be talking about in, in this particular uh, forum but uh, for for this particular discussion i think is the integrity there's not a common integrity i mean if you have a china i mean you talk about china right everyone kind of belongs let's say the han or the you know the, or the ethnic chinese you know they, they they basically come from the very same clan if i if i may use that word with india it is different i mean you have different religions okay you then you have different castes you have different sects it's a 
it's a it's a nightmare sort of a you know problem to have you just give an example of tomato right i think one of the issues why why you have high soaring prices is due, due to monsoons but possibly possibly the the prices could have been controlled due to the farm bill and could have been marginally could have been controlled due to the farm bill but why couldn't the farm bill you know be put on the table it just couldn't be passed again government could have done taken some efforts to make make sure you know it get passed but that's how it's the point of court. having a majority in the in the in the parliament yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah, was, was, a, yeah i agree with you separate separate discussion go ahead yeah let's go ahead sir right so i think one of the issues that you know india basically faces as a country is is this you know so many castes so many religions so many sects i think that's is kind of a you know hurdle that india faces as far as making sure their economy kind of grows at a scale let's say as china okay india i don't think so has ever reached uh, double digits but we never will you know okay <laughs> maybe uh, i mean that's that's <laughs> that's something that time would tell but uh, to i be think that's wrong of... honestly but we never will maybe Fair enough that's maybe. your opinion yeah. okay yeah. go ahead yeah 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 so I think the another, and I think we will just quickly touch upon the few other slides. I think we kind of discussed the the major point. One of the most important factors, which I basically you know try to feel where India kind of lacks, is as far as the overall you know the health sector of of India. And again, what are those two two to three important factors that you 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 know you basically want to compare this country to the rest of the countries? The first would be you know what is the life expectancy? What is uh, you know uh, what is the insurance coverage? of uh, of this particular country how many beds do we have how many doctors do we have you know per 10000 population or per million population now i don't have to show all the indicators but everyone knows for the matter of fact things possibly are not so good or there are uh, there is a lot of improvement that needs to be done in this particular sector although there are certain good things that i personally like when i hear certain stories of the west as far as you know the overall health sector is concerned and i'm talking about certain you know bigger uh, western uh, western economies is concerned one thing is there's a huge disparity between the rural india and the urban india and i think arvind you were here a couple of years back or a year back you've gone through you know the entire situation that you you did when you were in one of these hospitals it is a nightmare to deal with okay one of the good things that possibly india has is easier access to physicians easier access to doctors dial someone now you also have the facility of you know certain mobile apps practo you can have your family physicians you can just dial in anytime which possibly if any if, if you guys can correct me if i'm wrong you don't have that possibly that facility in you know certain western countries for sure you possibly will have to wait for a few hours or a few days just to get the appointment that's one of the things that i possibly like about this country so i have easier access to doctors or sees easier access to physicians but the rest of it rest of it beat insurance I, there are certain changes that the government at the state level as well like in telangana where we come from government has made an imperative to make sure everyone gets you know you know 10 lakh 15 lakh 20 lakhs whatever you know the, the access to private and and as well as the government hospitals i see that in rajasthan as well things are improving but again there's a huge disparity in you know we we spoke about tier 1 tier 2 cities but the quality of doctors quality of healthcare systems uh, healthcare system um, you know the overall i i spoke about number of doctors to number of patients and the, that entire system was you know uh, kind of it was kind of in disarray when we had the covid again covid is sort of an exception sort of a event and it kind of you know brought that imbalance in majority of the countries but in all india countries, also was not uh, sort of not just majority countries. in all so in, countries in all countries mm -hmm. but it it kind of you know uh, highlighted where this country lacks and i think again this government is trying to do its bit but again i think when i look at the gdp spend on education i mean education is something that i'll get into but as far as the healthcare is concerned there is only a marginal improvement as far as the gdp spending is concerned the rest of the countries i was just looking at you know certain information for certain other countries yes. which kind of excels in you know healthcare there is massive investment maybe if i'm if i'm right usa kind of spends 17% on healthcare 
you know yeah but 17 american plus. healthcare system is still a bit of a right right i get it i get it i get it it has its own pros and cons it it right. it, it, it has its own said. pros and cons right but i think one thing that this country needs to solve is the disparity of the healthcare uh, you know system in the tier 1 to tier 2 to tier 3 to tier 4 cities I mean, if the tier 4 cities basically exist making sure everyone gets you know equal access to the healthcare uh, to the insurance uh, that's another thing which needs to be solved good quality of doctors i mean education system which possibly we're going to talk about it's our education system is so focused on making sure we produce engineers and we produce doctors but we never focus on the quality of doctors and the quality of doctors it gets highlighted in rural india and i've seen it yeah. i've seen it i have faced it yeah because it sir, why would and i think that's because the problem starting why would the uh, high qualified doctors stay in saranpur exactly we call it sort of paise banana hai main mumbai jaunga yeah and that's those who can see poor jobs. quality of doctors there yeah yeah and those who cannot get jobs in you know in the cities doctors they will naturally you know migrate to uh, the less preferred or less richer areas now just to give you a comparative overview we always try to compare if not the us we always try to compare with china now if you look at the spending numbers uh, as a percentage of gdp china spends about 5% on education and about 7% on healthcare where are we along those numbers I don't think we're there. <laughs> we 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 spend less than one percent on education, yeah, right? We don't, we don't spend yeah. on education. What, again, we every time the government speaks, I I commend for some of the things that they are doing, but every time it's about marketing this whole GDP growth f- phenomenon without really touching upon how much of that money is actually being spent, yeah. uh, in in really crucial sectors. Now again, maybe it's a problem of short termism because. the government wants to you know um, project these numbers in the hope of some electoral gains but we are not really investing in the long term and i think uh, anand and you are absolutely right i completely agree with you and i think yeah. my my other point here is i don't think yeah sure china has probably realized it now and you know i mean china is a, a you know a 15 20 trillion economy now i mean i understand i mean they they doing it a natural step but outside china if i look yeah. other countries no other country has really invested in healthcare as much as they should have for their population for their gdp and i think covid was such an eye opener where yeah. all public health systems be it a high income country like a norway or a usa or mm-hmm. you know france or italy i mean these are the shocking images to india to china again being a the nation they are we don't know how much their full realities of it because the media is so you know state controlled i think generally across the board across the planet public health has always been neglected now some may have done maybe a 0.1% better than others and i think because of the lack of you know the lower population is probably has been so yes i think india needs to do more and, and and india needs to do absolutely more because of the population we have with the kind of you know the inequalities we have between a bihar a jharkhand versus a mumbai and you know a south mumbai and a south delhi so i hope our our government looks into this in the longer run and say if you want to grow become a prosperous tier one nation its health has to be the number one number one priority yeah. and and because we are being critics doesn't mean that we, we don't love our country we love our country that's why we we speak so passionately correct but, and, and, Absolutely. and you know, i think in the in, in in this race of you know becoming 5 trillion economy and 10 trillion economy i think one thing i hope this government or any future government be congress who if it comes in in power one thing that i think you know we should not a big if right i mean big if yeah yeah is is the i mean one is the healthcare and the second is the education healthcare is the utmost thing which i think you know any government which comes into the party is one thing that they need to make sure they spend a good amount of you know uh, because healthcare has an impact i mean it it is kind of correlated to productivity as well your productivity again has a has a am i right anand somewhere yes, direct yeah, yeah absolutely right. it has a direct right. effect on your educational attainment your ability to work your productivity how will you even think if you if you if you are uh, if you are uh, agar hospital ke chakkar kaat rahe ho right how will you think yeah 
Right. Let alone so, so, be able to work. So, so I just hope maybe in the years to come, this one percent to two percent, you know, the where the number that we are kind of stuck, the range that we are stuck as far as the you know healthcare spending is concerned, it kind of goes to four or five, and the same goes with you know education. That's uh, the next slide that I basically have. I think everyone knows what is the issue with the education system in India. It's the whole private school game versus the government school game. There are a lot of government schools that we basically have, but these are pure numbers. I think the schools and the universities that we basically see, okay, India has X number of universities, India has X number of institutions, those exist. But the quality overall, and again, that's that also goes in even in, in your, you know, the, the healthcare. Government has taken steps to make sure, you know, they like the Delhi, Delhi government, you know, they, they, they come up with Mohalla clinics. Indian government has set up a lot of aims, a lot of, you know, a lot of hospitals at the district level, at a panchayat level. I, I know I have seen that, but again, the quality, doctors, you know, physicians, your equipments, those all things matter. And similarly in education as well, Delhi possibly has you know, got this under control. And I mean, you've got to give that, good, you know, that, uh, you know, kudos to the Kejriwal government. But it's a scam across India. The private yeah. school, it's it's a scam. And again, everyone aspires that their kid goes to the private school. But is it really giving the quality? I, I do not know. I don't have the figures to show that. But if you just look at, you know, the, as far as the literacy is concerned, India has made good gains, but that's literacy. Is it really translating into you know, you know, uh, improving the uh, the economy of the country? I mean, if you just look at the literacy literacy rate, it possibly has improved, maybe what four times or five times in nineteen fifties. Yeah, because, because we we study crap during school, we memorize everything, and then on the next day the exam, like earlier, then we we don't remember what we wrote. Correct. This, I so, think, is the most important slide and the most important reason why the quality of life in India, despite all the growth we have talked about, doesn't reflect to, to the reality of it and why millions of Indians, aspirational Indians who want to have a better life, leave the country. They want to yeah. give their kid a better education. That's why after my bachelor's, Millions of Indians jayenge ki bhaiya, hume masters ke liye either USA, UK, Germany, Canada, New Zealand, Australia jane ka interest aata hai kyunki it's two tier. Bad education, lack of jobs outside tech. You're making people read engineering and all the computer stuff, but there are only so many amount of jobs. And so if I want to be a designer, if I want to be an architect, if I want to be a um, I know epidemiologist or a weatherman. Mm, good luck for the, for the for the quality of job and for the quality of life we just talked all about. This is the Achilles heel for India. Yeah, and also look that 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 sense of learning by rote even translates to companies. So all these guys, you know, I worked in an Indian IT company for less than six months. And honestly, that was enough for me. You know why? <laughs> uh, because I was brought into a project. I'll just give, share a personal experience and then we'll move on to the US quickly. Uh, because I think this is a separate topic which requires a much broader discussion. Yep. Now, when you see the kind of the quality with which people you know, work collectively uh, uh, to develop a project, man, the kind of code writing that goes on without any any planning, any kind of structure to it, you know, only God could have made that code work. And I'm sure it's the same across multiple projects, right? So, <laughs> so, you know, that whole lack of planning, lack of having a structure, lack of structured thinking, it just transcends to, uh, to the corporate workplace in India in, in many true. cases. And, you know, companies do try their best as long as it suits their needs or up to what it suits their needs, they try to, you know, retrain incoming graduates, but it is not sufficient. It Because this is a skill that has to be imparted. Some skills have to be imparted from childhood boss. You can't just go and uh, start working in a company and hope to, you know, get all those skills uh, right after. So, right. again, it's 
it's the, the where we are and where we want to be to be in an effective uh, position to compete with china zameen asman ka farak hai i just say to to conclude this uh, this segment i just tell people indians who want to who think of or dream of competing with china guys instead of going to thailand and getting all those massages just go uh, uh, take a chinese visa and bus shanghai ja ke spend one day in shanghai you will find how diff different how far away china has gone compared to us that's it china is a superpower anand china and india are not in the same league if i look at like from a football analogy china has a premier league india is still in the lower league trying to get to the premier league uh yeah. as much as i lord the government that they have moved from a tier 3 to a tier 2 league we have ways to go to get to the tier 1 give a, give it again time. I'm it's optimist. not just it's not just the government that has to change its stack people it is all the people that have to change absolutely it's as problem. long as you pay attention only to that bloody paycheck that you get every month and how bigger or how weighty it's becoming tum kuch nahi sudharoge that's true that is true um yeah, sorry any I, any other slide I, you have we we wrap up india no, here I, 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 other part i think there's there's another one but i kind of we we've we, we kind of touched upon it i mean and this is the you know income dis, you know uh, disparity that you know we were talking about again i think this is another issue that india has possibly in the days to come you know instead of you know having a conventional pyramid sort of a structure as far as your know, income distribution goes we possibly would be seeing in the days to come and this is what we can hope for a reverse sort of a pyramid uh, or i wouldn't say reverse but uh, let's say your middle if your middle class is growing that your your belly fat if i may say your majority of or let's say i would call that as a bell curve the bell curve is would be an ideal way of describing how possibly the income distribution of uh, india basically should be but right now i do agree for the fact that there is there is income disparity but with this income disparity also brings you know let's say for people like us who are in middle class or you know somewhere trying to aspire to be upper middle class we pay a lot of tax you know but we don't get to see okay this is this is my concern you know when i talk about quality of life a person who is paying tax to this country, to 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 the government what is the, the equal benefit output as far as the quality of life is concerned and again hmm. i know for a matter of fact only 3 to 4% of indians pay taxes but uh, that is something uh, i i think big, bigger you know, problems a bit of bigger problems as its own separate debate and i think these yeah. are the issues right these are the issues we all know we right. need to work on um right so hopefully now at this point of time hume laga ki we know india mein issues hain uh, middle class uh, lower middle class middle class tak pahunch gaya but middle class wants to take it to the next level and they are like i am not happy and, in india correct yeah and 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 just one point we even haven't like touched upon you know issues like pollution yeah security we are not even touched any of that so at all yeah, of those so. yeah and so i'm i'm just summarizing that and moving to us here saying all right we'll end it here great conversation guys uh, but i hope our audience will you liked it please hit that like button please subscribe uh, please share it with your friends and family we are just starting here there is so much we got we're going to talk about in the future we are here to try and share our common man's view to you know on the on the daily topics trying to give you the perspective what mainstream media is today actually missing giving that balance view giving the both sides of the view giving the historical perspective so please be really like that video it takes only 10 seconds please subscribe and please share thank you everyone we will talk again later